Boom. Wow, how early are we? One minute? 40 okay. seconds. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, to be fair, <laughs> not a full minute, but we are early. Welcome to the WAN show of the, uh, the 28th of April 2017. Yeah, uh, we have some really cool topics. One of them being that Acer has announced their most badass gaming monitor yet, which is pretty sick. The FCC announces a plan to reverse Title II of net neutrality, which I don't personally know a ton about because I'm a Canadian. We were like, no to that. <laughs> Um, but John will have much better insights on that topic. Amazon's Alex with an A uh, learns to talk like a human, which is cool. Elon Musk at a TEDx conference in Vancouver uh, teases a little bit of the Tesla electric semi truck, which is pretty cool. And four new Gigafactory locations, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, and yeah, there was one more thing. Oh my god, I keep on <laughs> double clicking with my touchpad and I'm a super noob. Nintendo is launching a new 2DS XL, which is like flippy and stuff, which is what the 3DS probably should have been this whole time, so it could have been cheaper and that 3D option would have just never been there, which would have been completely fine. And that's the show this week. Intro! Roll the intro! Look at it work. Look at that. Don't you like that when you just press a button and something just happens? It's so fantastic. Oh, man. Weekly analysis and sometimes. Sometimes we just talk about weird stuff. Make noise and make noise. People go, oh my god, the mic's not needed by the way. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Spectrum glasses! And Cooler Master. And move that back up there and go back. All right. So. First things first, that crazy monitor. Let's get up to the top here. Let's do it. Um, Acer's new gaming monitor, the notes in the dock say that it is 44 hertz, but my extremely techy brain was like, there's no way that's accurate. Thanks a lot, James. Yeah, yeah. So it's, oh. a, it's a 144 hertz HDR 4K UHD monitor. Super badass. Want to keep talking about it? Yeah. Uh, basically what Luke said, um, being billed as the <laughs> nicest... Acer gaming monitor that Acer has ever made. Um, there we it, go. It has a uh, local dimming for better contrast, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, for, so that that's yeah. part of the HDR bit where there's yes. all the different zones, mm -hmm. and it can like turn off different zones to get better darkness and contrast and stuff. Yeah, Super that's cool. one of the better solutions to get better contrast. Uh, four milliseconds of response time. Um, it doesn't say what kind of a panel it is, but I believe it will be, in, with four milliseconds, it will be an IPS. So like a little bit quicker IPS. And should look fairly nice, which is cool. Mm -hmm. uh, also has uh, HDMI 2.0. Um, I don't know if HDMI 2.1 has made its way onto any consumer devices yet, but if you want to run 4K at 60 hertz on this monitor, you can do it through HDMI 2.0. You probably shouldn't though. It's a 144 hertz monitor. You're gonna want to ah yes run at 144 so, hertz. So yeah, m maybe if your graphics hardware is like, linear powered, but yeah, yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know. If you want to like buy, for some reason have multiple inputs plugged in at once, yes, and you want to run something that doesn't need the 4K 144 hertz, you can totally do that, which is cool. Um, like 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 right now, if you had say this thing, the analog NT, which you guys can't see, but it's right off camera, you want to have that plugged in and your computer, you could totally do that. Yep, and it also has uh, Toby eye tracking built in. So okay. if, if you can scroll back up a little bit there, if you're wondering what that kind of bar That's on the right, bottom, yeah, there right is, here, that is what that would be. It is an eye tracker. So you've got interesting. That. Mm -hmm. Toby's been an interesting technology to follow because I tried them out at a CES, yeah, like quite a few years ago. And like, admittedly, it was not very good. It was pretty it, bad. It was a little bit of a work in progress and I saw it as well. Yeah, yeah. but it's it's kind of been a while. Uh, I know Sevidus, if you guys know Sevidus, uh, big streamer, he, he has it permanently mounted on the bottom of his monitor and he's done some streams where he used it and he says that it was pretty cool. And I had him try it in front of me because I was like, oh, BS. Um, and it worked well for him. So I'm assuming that it's gotten better over time, which is cool. Um, I also want to say a couple more words about that local dimming this monitor has. So apparently it's 384 different backlighting zones. Yeah. So the amount of control the monitor can exert over one tiny little section is actually pretty high. Uh, but you do need um, a 
you do need a 10 series NVIDIA graphics card, so a 1080 or 1070, something like that, with a DisplayPort 1.4 connector, but that should not be very difficult to find. That's the modern standard. So Yeah. 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 That's that's one thing about HDR with all the individually controllable. What the heck? <laughs> Is that like an accessory Is there a for hood it? on it? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, yeah what? Yeah, that's what it looks like. So I wonder if that comes with it. We'll see here. I didn't um, notice anything about that. But I if you guys either. can see this on screen, there's like like on, on, on a camera sometimes where I'm going to use totally the wrong term. I'm sorry, Brandon, if you can hear this. But on a camera sometimes there's like those things that come out past the lens to block certain light out from getting in the lens that you don't want. And it's kind of like the same deal, but for the monitor, there's a hood on the top and there's two side panels, yeah. sort of like horse blinders. Yeah, so if you're not in like a optimum environment and you have glare or whatever else. And you're you like, this is an HD monitor with a whole bunch of individually controllable lighting zones. It needs to look perfect. You know, if you're going to sink that much money into it, I can actually understand yeah. the attitude. And speaking of which, no pricing or release information on this yet, but hopefully soon. I'm really interested in the hood. I want to get it in here and try it to see if it actually really does You're really interested anything. in the hood, Luke? Yeah. You, you know, I, I get that impression from you just all the time. Yeah. You know, listening I'm super, to, your, to your rap at your desk. Super yeah. gangster. Super. Yeah. Anyways, okay. I thought that was pretty cool. It's fun to see Acer pushing more in the monitor segment. Wow, someone just made a big change to the dock. Thanks. Oh, what is happening? Oh, it's, it uh, looks like just to the table of contents. Okay, so this is very much more you, John. It is very much more but me. But the FCC announces plan to reverse Title II net neutrality. I know most of what those words mean. Okay. Um, and that's about it. Do you know what Title II means? No. Okay, so here's what's going on. So... The FCC has tabled a proposal to undo the 2015 rules that implemented net neutrality with a Title II classification. Now, here's what this means. So, before 2015, net neutrality was, it had been implemented, there are rules that the FCC had passed to say, okay, here are some things that your ISP cannot do. Again, the big thing for net neutrality advocates was you couldn't have any sort of unreasonable, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no unreasonable discrimination with network traffic. Okay, you know? yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so that rule was already in place prior to 2015. In 2015, they decided to, the best word to use here would be strengthen it. I guess that depends on your point of view. But they decided to strengthen it by, cl by classifying ISPs and internet services under the Title II of the Communications Act of 1934. And what this means is they'll be regulated as what's, as what's called a common carrier. And when you do this, what ends up happening is the, um, the regulations are a little bit more strict um, okay. as to like what they could do. Um, it, now, I, you may have caught the fact I said the Communications Act of 1934. It was actually enacted a long time ago, and it was originally, sorry, just let me mute my laptop here. That's very distracting. There we go. Okay. Um, <laughs> it was originally designed to regulate um, landline telephone carriers all the way back right, in the day. Okay. It was amended in 1996, and so now we have we have the legal framework that we have today. So can you so, explain, because like from a Canadian mm -hmm. point of view, sure. this came into our whatever, and we shot it down like almost immediately. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know a ton about it, um, but the Americans have gone through this a number of times before, have they not? This is maybe like, this is the third major action I can think yeah, of. Yeah, because I've talked about this on, on WAN Show since yeah. like 2013. Yeah, exactly. What's going on? Why isn't this permanently blocked out? That's one thing that I super don't get. Okay, so. it's been shot down every time, has it not? What do you mean? Oh, the, like you, um, weakening net neutrality has been shot down every time. Is that what yeah. you mean? Or, okay, it's a, it's a little bit complicated. So. Back in, I believe it was 2010 that maybe they first started to promulgate net neutrality rules, the FCC. So they first did it under um, a, a piece of legislation called uh, called Section 706. So section, that's Section 706 of the 1996 Communications Act. And the FCC said, okay, there is something in Section 706 that allows us to say, here's what your ISP can't do. It can't unreasonably dis discriminate between different forms of traffic, right? Uh, so in 2015, that's when they decided to bring in Title II, which is theoretically stronger. And now they want to roll, roll back and kind of go back to the way it was before 2015. Okay. So the concern here is, th so there's two sides to this. The telecommunications industry is saying, 
even if you want net neutrality, you don't want it under Title II because the way Title II works is the FCC can just kind of sit there and they can pick and choose what things in it are applicable to broadband because not everything is going to be because, like I said, this is an extremely old law that yeah. was originally designed for telephone Telephones, providers. Right? Yeah. So they can pick and choose what's going to apply to broadband. Um, the telecommunications industry, for reasons I hope are obvious, does not like this because they could, at some point, they could legally do more onerous things like rate regulation and actually tell Comcast or Spectrum or whoever else, you must charge this amount for internet service. They right. obviously don't want that. The other side of this is saying that, well, if you go back to regulating it under Section 706, it's going to be very weak. Um, I actually have the text of 706 right here in front of me. Oh, my goodness. And it's actually not very much. Um, but it says that uh, the commission with regulatory jurisdiction, blah, 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 um, shall encourage the deployment on a reasonable and timely basis of advanced telecommunications capability to all Americans in a manner consistent with the public interest, convenience, and necessity, price regulation, regulatory forbearance, measures that promote competition in the local telecommunications market and or other regulating methods that remove barriers to infrastructure investment. Okay. If you can digest that for a second, it's all kind of vague. There's okay. nothing in there that says thou shalt not discriminate <laughs> against different ki kinds of traffic. Right? Okay. So the the argument from people who are more concerned about net neutrality is that, oh, well, this is very wishy-washy. And even that last bit or other regulating methods that remove barriers to infrastructure investment. So the head of the FCC, who is pro-scrapping the Title II things, um, people are worried that this set, people are worried that about the bit about infrastructure investment because he he made a speech a couple days ago about this and he said oh well ever since they did this title II thing where they put strict regulations on isps there's been less money spent on infrastructure investment which is a bad thing because you have less you you're investing less in quality services but now, that's a yeah. very easy way for yeah them to manipulate that because oh, if they know is. that's it one is. of the yeah. things that the yeah. FCC is looking for they're just gonna be like oh we don't like this law no more investment get wrecked yeah it's it's an easy thing for them to do and you know there's there's some other there's some other things in his speech i found a little bit eyebrow raising um one of them was he was saying that oh people keep talking about like you know fast lanes for certain kind of traffic and they were afraid this happening and he was over here claiming that hasn't happened but it already kind of has a I think it was a couple of years ago, Netflix was fo forced to pony up a bunch of money yeah. to Comcast because Comcast, was it Comcast or? I don't remember who it was. I, it was one of the major ISPs. I think it was Comcast, but they ended up throttling Netflix's speeds, which for something like streaming HD video was super important. So that actually kind of has, has already happened. He didn't mention anything in his speech about net neutrality which was also a little bit concerning. So there's two sides to this, um, but basically the crux of the argument is which law is this going to be, is net neutrality going to be accomplished under? One is stricter than the other. So, so. someone has asked a question, shouldn't the FTC be the ones governing net neutrality instead of the FCC? So that's a difficult question to answer. Just for a little bit of background, the FTC is the Federal Trade Commission. They have usually been the federal agency in the U.S. to regulate things like consumer protection and also privacy. So the argument for the people who are on the sort of the chairman of the FCC, they're on his side that want to scrap these rules and kind of go back to the way things were prior to 2015. They're saying, OK, the FTC has been in charge of consumer protection and consumer privacy for a very long time. Why do we want to take, the, take this out of their hands now and put it into the hands of the FCC, which the argument is is more ill-equipped? to okay. deal with privacy issues and consumer protection issues. Now, whether you buy that or not is a completely separate argument, but there's, you know, the question kind of comes down to what's the inner working of each agency like, and I don't think I'm really qualified to speak on that, but. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you live so. in the States and you care about your internet, follow up with the stuff John said. Um, Sorry, it was a lot in a short time period, but you it's, fired through it. it I'm cool with it, it. It's 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 kind of a complicated issue yes. because you're getting down into the weeds of what the text of the law actually says. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's not that's not a thing for me. I don't want to tell you what to do. I I, I don't use the internet down there. So <laughs> yeah, follow it up on your own. I think that would be if I was down there and this was happening, I would be very interested and I would be reading up on it. Yeah. Because I started to worry about it when it became a thing up here, but then it was shot mm -hmm. down like immediately. So yeah. it's like, okay. And I'm sure, I'm sure like the way you're, the framework of how your um, communications are regulated in Canada is probably very different than what we have in the U.S. So, 
I don't know, but yeah. that would make sense. Anyways, moving on to a new topic. Amazon Alex. I'm just going to call it Alex because I don't want to trigger it, but there's an uh <laughs> at the end of this. So it's Alex with an A. Yeah, Alex with an A. <laughs> Amazon's Alex with an A learns to talk like a human. The reason why we're talking like that and not saying the full name, by the way, is we just don't want to trigger anyone's uh, version of this thing at their home to start searching for stuff. We and don't that want to has be happened before, so. Um, so yeah, Alex with an A is going to be better. It will be able to do things like whisper, take a breath to pause for emphasis, adjust the rate, pitch, and volume of her speech, and more. She'll even be able to bleep out swear words, which is pretty, <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Especially because she's going to sound more human. Mm -hmm. Like, man, what the bleep? Doesn't sound like something very human. Like sure. most people don't bleep out their own sentences, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I guess maybe if it sounds like a recording of a human, then it would be fine. I don't know. I kind of wish we could. I think swear words are actually funnier when they're bleep. Just start There's... saying bleep instead of a swear word. Well, no. Like if if you watch if you watch any kind of TV show where something gets bleeped out, I think it actually adds a little bit of comic effect. Maybe right. I'm crazy. The sharpness but... of the tone. Yeah. Uh, the new tools are being provided to third-party app developers, allowing them to control pronunciation, annotation. Timing, intonation. intonation. Yeah. Wow, I just read that super terribly. Timing and emotion, which is pretty cool. There I think go. that's awesome because the more natural these things are, paired with hopefully the back end getting a little bit better, it's going to be very awesome for voice assisted support. Uh, mm -hmm. My main thing that I'm excited for is locally based voice assisted support where not everything that I say has to go into some permanently logged box somewhere that I don't have access to. Yeah, follow that one under F for fat chance. Yeah, I, I know. know. I know. Yeah, I don't know about um, that. I'm just hoping that eventually some tertiary, like these things get so good yeah. at some point, it's so easy to do this stuff, mm -hmm. that some side company just makes one that you can buy. I mean, that would, I think there would be a... That would be uh, way more down for there that. There would be, like, a, I think a pretty big segment of the market that would be interested in something like that. Yeah, so. like, like a personal Jarvis. I had this idea mm -hmm. a really long time ago where I wanted to string all these mics throughout my house um, and have all of them at the same time permanently recording onto this giant notepad that was okay. going to automatically delete chunks above and rewrite and all this kind of stuff. And I was gonna have dragon speaking permanently running so that it tried to like dictate everything that was said within my house onto this notepad. And then I was gonna have another program watching the notepad and making actions based on what was there. And then I was like, no. What would be the ultimate point of something like that? My own Jarvis. But I'm not. Oh, I'm I, not nearly I good see. enough. I see. That's well, the you, problem. You, is me. Yeah, th th that last bit you kind of lost me there because to me it almost sounded like you just wanted to transcribe your own speech. No, no, because there would so, be another bot yeah. watching the dog gotcha. for I like see. words that might now. show up. Mm -hmm. So if I said like Jarvis or whatever else, it would then pay proper attention to the next few words that come up, and then it would like do whatever I needed to do. Yeah, but I'm just not. I'm not. If only you had a massive team of coders handy, and like a massive <laughs> like machine learning apparatus. Yeah, I'm working on getting a massive team of coders mm -hmm. ready. So far, I have not enough, but the ones that I have are awesome, because we're doing good things. Boiler Boiler's been learning front end. Really? <laughs> yeah. All right. It's been great. I just, I would rather he was able to work on the stuff that he's particularly very good at. It's good that he's learning everything. Hi, Boiler. Um, but yeah, I need more support for him. I'm working on it. Elon Musk at TED Vancouver was teasing a Tesla electric semi truck up to four new Gigafactory locations as well, which is pretty freaking cool. Um, I, this guy is going to take over the world. There was a picture of uh, SpaceX, mm -hmm. and they had like one of the uh, rockets fuselage. The fuselage of the rocket. Yeah, like the main body. They had of the one rocket. of the they yeah. had one of the fuselages of the rockets. Yeah. They had the giant boring machine, and they had like one other thing, and it was like, what is even happening here? Yeah. <laughs> it was so awesome. Anyways, so, uh, Elon yeah. Musk on stage at 2017 TED conference in Vancouver today. He showed a shadowy image, which I will hopefully have. I do not have a source for you. A smooth, continuous Thanks, James. design. Yeah, way to go, James. <laughs> a smooth, continuous design between the windshield and the upper facade. So that would, it would be very. A whoosh. Like, <laughs> I don't know how else to describe that. 
Uh, I think it'll look very futuristic. Yeah. Maybe? Can you try to find? Is there yes, pictures of this thing? Um, Elon Musk electric semi. Musk also said that there will likely be four, like I just said, new Gigafactory sites announced this year, but none quite yet. The company said in its most recent earnings report that it plans oh, to finalize go. locations for up to three new Gigafactory sites this year, in it's addition a, to the existing Nevada location. It's just a teaser image, but it looks kind of cool, I don't know. But it looks the, like a semi-truck. Well, the headlights are very Tesla-like. Is that actually the one that was shown on the stream? Um, that's what it looks like, yeah, based on the caption here. Give me one quick second sure. to get this on screen. Yeah, there you go. Just any of those. Cool. Right there. Can I blow this up a little bit, maybe? A new tab. There we go. So it's kind of hard to tell, but yeah, you can see there's a seam there where mm -hmm. the windshield hits the top, but it's not like a major difference. I don't know. It, no, looks, it looks like a semi-truck. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited for it. But it, are you? It looks like a are you, truck. are you planning to get your CDL and become a truck driver, Luke? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm gonna abandon Flow Plane Club. I'm gonna abandon Linus Media Group. I'm just gonna drive a truck, which is gonna be automated in a few years, anyways. I just I hate having a job. So I just want to go down a career where it will take my job away. You know, there's a difference between hating your job and hating having a job. Because I think most people, the second thing is probably true. I don't hate having this job. I didn't say a particular job. I would, I I would said, yeah. prefer to come to work every day because yeah. I'm a weird person. Oh, I'm, ta I'm, I'm talking about like... I'd prefer to come to work I'm, late every day. Oh, no, I'm talking about worrying about like living in a box is what I mean. Oh, yes. Not, not you know, not the you know, of doing a certain thing. Minor you know, complications. So, yeah. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. Also, there's apparently a UK Iron Man who demonstrated a flying suit. I'm going to have to see this one. He's a British inventor. Um... Apparently he flew it at the TED conference in Vancouver, which is pretty sick. You can see him right here. This is his suit. You can see him there as well. How far off the ground did he get? That's what I would like to know. Uh, he doesn't look like he's that far off the ground, but it looks like he's got some type of propulsion on his legs, mm -hmm. kind of like Star Wars rocket boots. There's a video, there's a short video. And he's got some on his hands, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's more of a proof of concept than anything. Like, I can hover above the ground. Yeah, at least, yeah. So this is possible. Look at me, Mom. The suit can fly uninterrupted for around 10 minutes. That's actually pretty good, That's considering how good. slim line the suit is. It doesn't seem that big on him. It's it's a yeah. decent size, but it doesn't seem way too big. I mean, that's not bad considering how long was the Wright brothers' first flight? How long did that last for? Like 15 seconds or something? <laughs> so, I mean, 10 minutes is looking pretty good next to that. There he goes. So That's pretty sick. Whoa, Whoa. there's a bunch of power on there. I wonder how hard that is to control. He seems yeah, to be doing pretty it, good. It looks like he is just keeping it steady, just using his arms alone. Like, there's no... Because I was thinking, like, oh, on this well, yeah. this one in other yeah. mock-up models, like the one right below it, mm -hmm. you can see the rockets on his feet. Oh yeah. This one, it just seems like he has them on his arms and possibly his back. Oh, there we go. There's something on his back as well. Yeah. Yeah, but so. he doesn't have the feet ones on. So I, I guess there's a few different yeah. iterations. That's pretty cool, though. That is pretty cool. I want one of those. Here's a different one. He can move around pretty quick. Mm-hmm. I just like the idea of like super extended jumps. Like jump assist. That's in a few different games. Where like you go to jump something and you like blast this thing and it gives you a little bit more distance and height. That would be super cool in my opinion. I'm just trying to think of the possibilities with something like this. Just like Man. glide to work. You make a slimline version of this mm -hmm. that you can wear that just kind of looks like a normal backpack. And maybe the wrist and leg things aren't like way too big, but they're like nicely integrated. Mm -hmm. I would be super down. Oh, me too. That would be so cool. You know, like if that something like that ever does hit the market, like what the early adopter tax is going to be on it. Oh yeah, but like, it's like, like you can float. Casey Neistat video comes out. He's riding on a boosted board, and then there's like a big gap, and he just like hops up and floats over it. Damn. All while filming somehow. He'll make it work. 18 trillion views. Eight <laughs> billions of views. <laughs> All the views. Oh man. There you go. 
I thought that was pretty sick. There's also, okay, so you said you had something to say about this. Police to scan soccer fans' faces? Yeah, so this is going to be at this year's uh, UEFA Champions League final um, in, in Cardiff in Wales. Uh, so there's going to be cameras around the stadium and also at the main train station in Cardiff. And so the expected attendance is, this says 170,000. I don't think Millennium Stadium in Cardiff can hold 170,000 people. I think, it, I think it was probably supposed to be 70,000. Let me see. I'm going to Google this real quick. <laughs> Millennium Stadium, Cardiff. Let's find out. Capacity, 75,000. Okay. So I think, I think that, that, that was supposed to be a little bit north of 70K. They're anyway, going to compare yeah. it against a police database of 500,000 people of interest. People of interest. So if there's, if there's a match, police will get a heads up that could stop, help them stop a terrorist or frequent hooligan. Now, in, frequent hooligan. Well, here's the thing. So in European soccer, there are, if you get banned from like one stadium for doing something particularly bad, you can get banned from a lot of them. And Hooliganism isn't as bad there as it used to be, but if you ever watch soccer, English soccer, European soccer, uh, you can still see some of the legacies of the hooligan era back in the 1980s. Like, they still have crowd segregation um, at all the Premier League games. So if you watch a Premier League game, it's not like in the U.S. or Canada where if you are a fan of the visiting team, just get a ticket, sit wherever you want to, cheer for your team, and hope nothing bad happens yeah. like that guy that threw the can at me. Um, yes, that was okay. Um, that guy was a jerk. D different story, but... Um, but in in, but in Britain, uh, you will see, so there will be a, a specific section in every stadium for visiting supporters. And what will often happen is you'll see um, stewards, um, basically like stadium workers in like really bright day glow jackets standing all around the perimeter of where the opposing supporters are just to prevent any fights or <gasps> any sort of other unseemly behavior. So, Oh, my goodness. So, uh, so yeah, there's, there's all these legacies of the hooligan era that you can still see in, in European soccer. So... Is, so obviously, when one person does something bad at one place, if it's bad enough, they'll just say, okay, you're banned from every soccer venue in Europe for six months, a year, five years for life, depending on how bad it is. So, I, so I'm guessing this is why they want to do that. Um, so the fine the, Doesn't this yeah. sound a little preemptive? Um, yes and no. Some of the instances are there have been pretty bad. I mean, if you look at who's playing, maybe, um, it's going to be one of Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid versus one of Juventus and Monaco. So th it's probably not going to be a huge rivalry in the final, but even so, every big club has a few people that are going to come and they're going to try to cause trouble just because they can. So, um, but there obviously is a concern here. Uh, it says South Wales police will have to honor the country's usage guidelines, only harvesting as much information as they really need and being transparent with the data they collect. But there has already been evidence of police forces both in the UK and abroad preserving face recognition data for innocent people. So how are they using that data? Yeah. Yeah. And like like the frequent hooligans thing, I get it, but if you like if you screw around a bunch and then you're like, "Okay, hey, I'm going to not be a jerk anymore." Mhm. Mm are you going to get blamed if something bad happens? If a riot happens in your area and you're just trying to flee that area because you're like, mm -hmm. I'm not about that life anymore. Yeah. Um, like, are you going to get screwed anyways because you got picked up by a facial scan? Oh, man, that's a good question. Like that, I mean, because a lot of... A lot of places do keep known hooligan databases, so that is that known hooligan. That databases. is actually a thing. But um, as far as what is, I don't know. Like that's a good. That, I guess that would be. I guess that would be a little bit of a risk. But you know, if they all captured on camera, maybe that would exonerate you too. So who knows? Ah, uh, yeah. I guess we'll see. Yeah. No way to tell for now. I don't like it. I don't like the yeah. preemptive stuff. I, I'm trying to think if any of those four clubs have, like, a large and active hooligan firm. But then again, you know, you also have to worry about individual people just having too much to drink and causing problems, too. So right. Knows, but. Yeah. That's a good call. Now, are you... I know you're a Nintendo fan in terms of Mario Kart. Are you a Nintendo fan for their mobile stuff? Um, what specifically? Like 3DS, 2DS. Oh, yeah, I, I have a 3DS. I have a number of games for it, so. So what do you think about this? They have a new 2DS XL. I'm going to throw the video up here and mute it. Um, but essentially, it's a 3DS XL without 2D capability, for as far $80. as I can really tell. For $80. No, 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 no. For Is that like, what it says? For like or no, 150 US dollars. Wait, where does it say... Oh, 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 that was for, I'm sorry, that was for the original 2DS. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay, I think the price is a little bit steep for what it is, but as far as just, you know, that aside, just looking at the concept, I think this is a really, really good idea. Um, the 3D on the 3DS, I mean, it's 
pretty okay for what it Ugh. is, but it's not it's not for everybody. Like Ugh. like my wife has a 3DS as well, never uses the 3D feature. Yeah. I used I use it on mine, but if it's for if it one day just broke and I can never use it again, I wouldn't miss it very much. What, I, what do yeah. you use it for? For everything? I try to turn it on when I can because it's a feature which I paid for, so I might as well try to use it and get some kind of enjoyment. Okay, out of but it, if but, but if you had the option to buy one or the other, and one's like, how how much is a 3ds XL in the states? You know. <sighs> Um, I think they're a little bit cheaper than these be. It's closer to two hundred, so I think you're, I think you're saving about forty or fifty dollars with this thing. With okay. The, with the new yeah. DS, yeah. Because in Canada, I think these are, like, about two hundred bucks. And I think the that original unibody design was what turned a lot of people away from the original two DS because it just it wasn't as portable. It wasn't very attractive. It just, it's a know. very durable system. Yes, I've had a two DS in the past. Mm -hmm. I traded it in and got a three DS XL eventually, but it's a very durable system. But yeah, it's it's not very wieldy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to do a straw poll. I'm interested for the Nintendo people out there. Um, do you like um, the three D option on your three DS? So yes, no, and indifferent. Um, yes. And this is specifically for Nintendo people out there. Don't press indifferent if you don't own one and you don't care. Only press indifferent if you do own one and you're like, yeah, I turn it on sometimes, but it's not amazing. I don't, I don't know. Now we're going to get a bunch of indifferent spam from the PS Vita crowd. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll come back to that later. Cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little bit different. It can play 3DS games, but without the 3D effect. Um, it can also play normal DS games. Um, the, the main thing is, unlike the 2DS, instead of being flat, it does fold now, which is very good. I think it needs to be much cheaper. Um, apparently, it still packs the same power as the 3DS XL. Um, they're 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 the claiming they're claiming that this addition to the handheld market uh, demonstrates their commitment to the handheld market. Um, so yeah, that's cool. A again, it's 150 US dollars. It launches in Australia and New Zealand on June 15th, and in the US on July 28th. Is the Switch going to just cannibalize part of the market for this thing? This is why I'm saying it needs to be cheaper. I think, okay, I think a little bit, yeah. but this is something I've talked to other people about. The Switch is kind of delicate. Yeah. And it can't, like, fold. And it's pretty big. Like, you can't just fit it in your pocket. And if you get, like, the case for it so you're actually protecting it properly, it's, like, pretty freaking yeah. big. It's going to yeah. go in, like, a backpack. Well, you can't fit a uh, 3DS XL in your paw pocket. Uh, a standard 3DS, yeah. What? I can't. In all of my pants and all of my shorts. Okay. Get wrecked. <laughs> okay, Luke. But it's 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 still. Yeah, I got I got big still, pockets. It's still rather. Luke has large pockets. He, yeah. he 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 thinks it's very important that you know. Not full so. of money. They're empty in that regard. Most unfortunately. But they can fit a 3ds XL, which is pretty cool. I, I think it needs to be closer to 100 bucks still. I I really think it's yeah. a little bit cheaper. I think like okay, can you look up how much a 3ds XL costs? Sure. In I, US I dollars. I think it's I think it's 190. Um, I'll look on Amazon. I guess. I'm gonna so check on the straw poll real quick. You do that. 3ds XL. No, not 3s XL. 3ds. There we go. So 51% okay. of people said no. Oh, goodness. 29% okay. of people said indifferent. Actually, and only 20% of people said yes. You know what? On Amazon, it's, like, right. it's closer to 250 which I don't think is right. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe like, they're, they're, like, really expensive in Canada. You know what? Let me check. Um, well, I'm checking the U.S., but let me check Walmart. Um, like, if you, just, if you just want to go to Walmart and buy a 3ES XL, like, how much would that be? Enter. Come on. 250. Also closer to 250. I could have sworn they were cheaper than that. I don't think so, man. I got mine for less than 200. I do remember that. Probably like a sale or something. Like Walmart does yeah. really aggressive sales on these Fair in holiday season. Yeah. So so right now they're closer to 250. I still think they should be a little bit cheaper because if you're saying the original 2DS was has been dropped to 80 bucks, you're paying almost twice that so you can get one to folds. I think the 2DS didn't sell very well. I bet you they're dropping it to 80 bucks to try to kind of get rid of it. Because like I I. I don't think I've ever seen one in the wild. Nah, I that wasn't like my no. brother's. I think I saw a small child on a 2DS one time somewhere, and that was it. So they are yeah. pretty dang durable, though. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, if you got a, like, yeah, a 3DS or a 2DS XL or a normal 2DS, 
are far more durable than yeah. a Switch. Mm -hmm. They just are. Um, Absolutely. Now, the Switch has Zelda, but still. Anyways, sponsor spot time. Oh, here we go. We have to uh, put our glasses on. glasses, here we go. There we go. So these are pretty cool. These are called Spectrum glasses. Um, st they say staring at a monitor all day can be hard on your eyes over time and make it tougher to fall asleep. That's why things, uh, there's certain like applications that you can put on your desktop um, that will like change the color of your screen exist. The but idea then, is to reduce the blue light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then those are kind of annoying because if you need to see like the true color of something, just being able to do that is pretty cool instead of something, I think it's called FLIR? No, no, that's a camera. That's the IR Flux. cam. Yeah. Um, F.LUX. It's, it actually like changes the color of your screen, which I'm not personally a fan of. Now, I have not been wearing these a ton lately, but they seem comfortable to me, but we have someone in office who has been wearing them almost since he got hired, and he likes it a lot. Um, who? James. Oh. Yeah. James has been wearing them. Um, if he hears this and wants to come down here and be a model for the glasses, that would be fantastic. Um, they, they look good. We have a whole bunch of different models. Yep. I like these ones. John yeah, these likes are like those ones. These are like kind of a gray charcoal. They're good. Um, there's a, yeah. there's oh, another yeah. pair that don't look particularly that great on me, but they look really good on Dennis. They're these, or at least I don't think they look that Aren't great Are those like on the me. Burberry style ones? I believe so. Yeah. 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 And what I actually do like these a fair bit because, um, like, if you have a smartphone, which, of course, vast majority of you do, uh, if you get, like, an app that says it reduces blue light, sometimes the effect can be too aggressive and everything has, like, this really noticeable red twinge. Through these sc uh, computer screens and things, they still look very natural. Very like, normal. There's obviously a difference, but if you put the glasses on, it doesn't look like the colors are super off or untoward. It looks very natural. It's just slightly less blue. So one, there you one, go. one of the big things that James said, he's one of the writers here, so he spends a lot of time staring at like Word docs and spreadsheets all day. So with that much bright light, he said that it's helped a lot, which is cool. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, they, they feel nice. They come with a one-year warranty. Um, they say their product is extremely durable. Um, the low color distortion, they block high energy blue light. That's the whole point. Um, but they do try to keep colors as similar as possible. That's something we just talked about. It doesn't actually seem to change that much, which is cool. If you're interested, uh, go to spectrumglasses.com slash collection slash products. The link will be below on YouTube and use offer code Linus to save 10% off. Yeah, and this is actually a Vancouver startup, so they're a local for us. So yeah, there you go. and I think it's cool that James has actually been using them. It says James has been wearing these nonstop for weeks. Weeks as in, I think, above four. Like, I think mm -hmm. it's been quite a while, and yeah. he likes them a lot. Apparently, he started wearing them so close to his actual start date of working here that people thought that they were just his normal glasses. Um, oh, yeah, so that's why I didn't know who was wearing them, because I thought he just wore glasses. So, yeah, 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 so those are those are his glasses, yeah, which is cool go. that they're, they, like, actually kind of blend in. You would think they were just normal glasses, but no, they have technology. Um, our other sponsor today is, oh, I did that whole thing without doing this. There's oh, the goodness. link that okay. you guys so need. We're going to put the glasses if, back if, on. If you want these, go, go, here. go here. Go there. There we go. There we are. Yeah, use offer code Linus, save 10% off. Um, again, they filter out blue light from your monitor. That's like the most aggressive, intense light that you can have. Moving on, we have... Cooler Master with their Master Keys Pro line of keyboards. That's not in there. Don't take it out. I have the one with the keyboard in it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Master Keys Pro keyboards come in different sizes. I have the medium. John has the, the large. large. Um, oh my. Uh, they complete the Cooler Master keyboard pro portfolio, which is cool. Um, it, it can be simple because you just pick your switch color. So this one is a blue. Is that one also a blue? Oh, that one is also a blue. blue cherry blue. These were probably picked for me. Uh, blue is my favorite color, oh, although it does annoy people on my stream. That's fine. Clack, you like blue? What's your favorite color? My favorite color? My favorite color is Switch. Switch. Um, That's a difficult question. I like greens. Greens? I'm a green guy. Special. I, 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 like, I like my greens. Rare. I know. Uncommon. Yes. Um, the Master Keys Pro... White, M, and L have LED backlighting, which is cool. If you're into a more brighter, clean white keyboard, that could be for you. It utilizes the ARM Cortex M3 processor um, on its on-the-fly system, which is pretty cool. It has lighting modes, macro recording, and a combined with four profile keys, which 
are somewhere. Um, they have easy to use software. They've combined N key and six key rollover together, which is cool. So, and it's ideal for both work and play because it's, it's a keyboard. Um, so you can WASD on it and you can home row, which is cool. That's totally up to you. Check them out at the link below. Um, that's coolermaster.com slash product slash line slash keyboards. Um, yeah, cool. Cool. Or check out the link in the video description on YouTube. And there we go. I'll take that back. Oh, oh no! At least hit, you hit the hit thing the in front of it. Not I'm gonna put these back on actually. Yeah. There They're pretty go. good. They're pretty yeah. good. I like them. There you go. I don't know if they look that great on me, but I like them. Let's get Dennis out here. I think they're cool. Dennis can come out here Dennis, and model. Yes. Dennis. 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 Can he hear that? I can hang out some. Cool. Yeah. Oh, oh there wait, we go. Oh, there he is. There he is. Put these on. And stand in front of the Wait, camera. Jill? You have to be our model. Wait, Jill. Okay. So this is my glasses. Mm -hmm. Oh. These are just regular glasses, yeah. Let's see. Do I look different? Not very. No. I think they look good. They look so natural. I can't I can't see now. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Actually, I actually like this one. Here, one second. Put them back on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. okay. Put your other glasses on. Oh. Oh, I think this one a little bit bigger. Yeah. Oh. But what do they do? They filter out blue light. So look at the screen and then put the glasses on. See how that works? Mm. Yes. Yeah. Your, your yeah. Way. Yeah. So it's supposed to be less harsh on your eyes. You can fall asleep easier afterwards, all that kind of stuff. Am I going to sleep at work if I wear this? <laughs> 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 Makes it easier to fall asleep. It's not going to put you asleep. <laughs> they're not sleeping pills. They're just glasses. <laughs> but it'll make it less harsh so you're not forced yeah. to kind of stay up. Anyways, back to normal content. AMD puts two GPUs and 32 gigs of RAM on a Radeon Pro Duo graphics card. So Brandon saw this down at NAB, but decided not to... Wow, this is the Ars Technica show, apparently. We have so many Ars Technica um, news articles today, which is cool. I like those guys. Uh, but yeah, Brandon saw this down at NAB, but they weren't showing really good demos. That is a so it was hard color. to. Yeah, I actually really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> actually, yeah, because it filters out blue light. So yeah, look, but it still looks how... solid. This is the longest ad spot oh, ever. Yeah, oh, I, I, I'm not even looking at Twitch chat, but I feel yeah. like, oh my god. Yeah, no, probably. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. that isn't even, I was just interested. Yeah. Um, yeah, the card combines two Polaris GPUs for $1,000, and it launches in May. This is not targeted as a gaming card no. at all. They launched it at a, like, camera and film show. They didn't even announce it to us at all. Like, it's it's not a gaming card, but it is super cool regardless. And you get a, what appears to be the Team Rocket logo on the fan. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, almost exactly the same. I really like the blue. I really like the position of these power connectors, especially with the types of systems that it's probably going to go in. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you might have a bunch of them in a row if you're going to do something like so, that. Yeah, that's going to make it much easier if you have tight gaps between your uh, between your graphics cards. Absolutely. Yeah, AMD claims 11.45 teraflops of performance compared to uh, 16 for the older Radeon Pro. But one that is also substantially cheaper, cooler, and less power hungry, and you get dramatically more RAM. 32 gigs. That's crazy. Just think of how much stuff you could hold in your frame buffer with 32 <laughs> gigs of RAM. You would never be wanting for a large like frame buffer ever again. A whole game. Basically. Just like <laughs> yeah. Let me just render this well, entire win. game first. Yeah. Every possible scenario. No, that's obviously way too much, but still. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. It's not It's not like, it's not for us. It's not for gamers. You can no. come over here. Every time. Yeah. I need yeah. to work on my chair positioning. You know, m most people probably, actually maybe, there could be a ton of H3 fans in the audience. Have you ever watched the H3 show when he was like, Oh, and she, and she just like pushes this? Ethan out of the screen. No, she like goes or, out on her own. Oh. And I feel no. like whoever sits on this side, because that normally happens to me 
and is Linus is pulling like, me over. Is slanted or something? I, every so, every I so don't, slightly? Like, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I think it's because you have to end up sitting, like, way on this side of the table. Yeah. So everyone wants to naturally correct oh, themselves right. to where they're yeah, supposed to be on the I table. I think there's something in that, yeah. yeah. So. Anyways, uh, moving on. Let's see what else we have. The show's technically been over for 13 minutes, but I want to look at this one, too. Fallout is bringing post-apocalyptic warfare to your tabletop. Actually, not an Ars Technica article Wait, this time. Wait, the show's been over for 15 minutes. What? No, like, like it's it's an oh, like Twitch page just died. I wanted to post the link in the chat. Come back, Twitch. No. Okay, it's fine. This it's, it's, um, it's, it's about it's supposed to be about an hour long. Oh, when did, well, we st we still have we still have 15 minutes then because we started at 4:30. So it's only 5:15. Oh my goodness! I thought we started at four for some reason. That was weird. Anyways, Fallout 4 miniatures game goes on sale this November. Don't worry about it. It's cool. It's it's, it's fine. Um, apparently it was possibly going to crowdfunding, but it is not. I'm not entirely sure if that's true. It just says it'll skip crowdfunding. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, anyways, some of the miniatures are detailed down here, which look pretty cool. Oh, so you guys can't see anything. So there you, you go. like paint it yourself miniatures again? Yeah. yeah. So people other than me might be good at it, which would be pretty cool. If I got into a miniatures game, I would definitely have to fund someone else to paint my miniatures, or I'd just be all gray all the time. One of the two. What if you like three D ashen print skin? What if like three D printed like a color scheme directly onto it? Would that even work? If you got like if you got some filament that took a little bit longer to dry, and you could just like sort of so paint with plast melted plastic. If you could get get a, a nozzle or like a thing that had like fine enough control or something, I don't know. But then it's I'm doing art. It's still me doing art, which well, is bad. But at least you won't have to worry about like holding your hand super steady, you know. Yeah, I would still really, really, really suck at it. Okay. Um, but there's some of the monster enemies, which are pretty cool. Let me see if I can blow this up. Wow, it's all transparent stuff. Good job, Polygon. <laughs> it looks it looks neat. It looks cool. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be interested to see someone actually play it because uh, I'm not a huge miniatures person myself. I'm really into the Star Wars Edge of the Empire role-playing game that's mm -hmm. super fun and i'm really into like uh other tabletop games but i've never gotten into a miniatures game we should get tyler on the show to talk about this maybe yeah uh the main reason why i haven't is because uh the the cost scares the ever-living crap out oh of me. yeah of course those things are so expensive yeah my goodness we started playing um what is the name of that football game we started blood playing bowl. blood bowl we started playing blood bowl we still haven't done the finals it's Anthony versus me for the finals, and we just haven't done it. And the trophy looks like the Lombardi trophy, except the football has spikes on it. And, yeah. it's, and it's gold instead of silver, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, let's see here. More topics. Uh, Microsoft is completing their Windows Phone wind down by June. Okay, this is just... This isn't even a tech topic. It's just hilarious. Um, a Russian spy ship was sunk by a sheep barge. So I don't, I don't know... I don't even really... The circumstances just seem so random because it was a Togolese ship. It was a ship with the Togo flag carrying sheep between Jordan and Romania. Yeah. It's the most random thing. And, and a Russian ship hit it and the Russian ship sunk. Yeah. A spy ship. So, a Russian spy ship. So the Russian ship was built in 1970 and was converted into an intelligence collection vessel in 1989. That's it right there, I guess. Yep. Oh. oh there, there's the barge. So that's a pretty big oh, barge. Oh, okay. It was when when you're reading the description for it, the barge sounds like a raft. It does. It sounds like that this, thing's like, ginormous. It, it, it sounds like a pile of wood that just puts some sheep. Yeah, on yeah. Told it to go float. Yeah. Okay, that's a pretty intense. That's not like some random raft with a. No, it's not. This is like a shepherd. This and is some like sheep. inertia in action. Like you yeah. can't. Yeah. So it just got super wrecked. That's far yeah. less interesting than I thought it was. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, next topic. Uh, we do have other topics. We do have other topics. Um, the Windows Phone wind down. AMD. AMD. This topic was posted by Zmule on the forum. We're going to jump over on the forum real quick, make sure I'm not logged in. That's good. Uh, AMD making money from ad revenue from installing drivers. So apparently when you install one of their new drivers, 
Um, yeah, so T Terry Macadon, hopefully I'm saying that right, uh, says that some of you didn't like game icons installed, so we updated the Radeon software package without one. We heard you, sorry. So without having an option for it, it just linked game icons onto your desktop, which were shortcuts with monetized tagged links to go get the game, I guess. And I don't, really, I can't think of a demographic that has less tolerance for bloatware than people who are really into PC gaming. Like, I'm amazed why? that, why? like, yeah. yeah. It was even a bitly tracking link, so they weren't even, like, trying to hide that it was happening. It wasn't a direct link to the official page. Like I said, it was a bitly tracking link. It had a referral ID included in the final URL destination. Uh, Man, first, uh, first they draw the capsaicin molecule the wrong way, now this. <laughs> okay, do you want to explain that a little bit? Oh, okay, you put me on the spot. Uh, Go for it. So, I believe in you. So, so the capsaicin thing, it was like what they were calling uh, some of their uh, events surrounding uh, their, their, their new Radeon stuff, right? Yeah. Because capsaicin, capsaicin is the chemical that makes hot peppers hot, and hot peppers, what color do you think of? Red, like AMD Radeon, so capsaicin. But So they had like a whole branding package up for this. Can you pull the logo up, actually? I can, this will uh, Yes, give me a second. Gr greatly. Just type capsaicin and cream, and you'll find it. Um, Luke is going to pull up the logo of this thing here. So image search would probably help you. There you go. I'm, I'm working Sick. on okay, it. Okay, there we go. Okay, so can we pull that up? Very good. So that's the, that is purportedly the molecular structure of capsaicin, except there's a huge problem here. Um, that You're going to have to draw with your mouse here. Yes, this ring over here, this ring, this sort of six-corner, uh, this hexagon here. So the thing about capsaicin is this ring is actually aromatic, which means you have, you should have a double bond here, a double bond here, and a double bond here. And there are even real double bonds. What would be, what's actually happening is the electrons are sort of going, wee, like that, like all around these six, these are all carbon atoms. Each, each corner is a carbon atom, right? So they neglected to put in the double bonds or the aromaticity in this, and so the molecule is actually not capsaicin. It's something completely different. I don't know what it is, but it's not capsaicin. It's not the same stuff that actually makes your hot peppers hot. And they went to the trouble of saying, oh, we're going to use this organic chemistry model in our branding. So if you do that, you should really do it correctly. I mean, this is a field where, like, if you know anything about, like, pharmaceuticals, for example, where if you have one molecule, if you take it and you make it a mirror image, a change as small as that can completely change what it does inside your body. So this is not correct, and it bothers me. <laughs> so first this, and now they're putting bloatware in with, with, with their drivers. Just What next, AMD? Don't. What next? Just you don't. turn your ice cream machines off past 2 a.m.? I minored Jeez. in chemistry in college. That's why I know this. Yeah, so. just, to, just to explain. Yeah. Okay, probably last because we're just running out of ad topics, to be completely honest. Ad topics, show topics. Um, there is a 3D printer with tank treads, which is <laughs> just Twitch sort of awesome. Twitch blow up here in a second. <laughs> ad topics. I was thinking about the AMD ad thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to post this in Twitch chat. Uh... What didn't you minor in in college, says Twitch chat. Well, I minored in chemistry and political science, so everything that aren't those two things. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, what's happening? MIT's mobile 3D printer built the largest structure to date. So you can kind of see it there. Here we go. There's a video, cool. which I will mute. So it's spraying out, like, a lot of stuff at a time, and it's sort of foaming looks, up a little bit. Looks like Cool Whip. Cool whip. cool whip. So that is a 3D printer that is driving around in order to lay its, I guess, I don't know if you can call it filament, to lay its stuff. I don't know what it starts as. Excretions. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Look at it go! Whee! Looks like a big pot, like a pot That is thing. super cool. That is cool. I feel like the military would be super stoked with something like this. Oh, like if you could like quickly have some sort of like shelter for yeah. things. Yeah, like, like I feel yeah, definitely. Seriously doubt whatever it just printed is like a defensible structure. But if you could just throw up something that people could shelter in, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. You know, th this could be useful like, or for like, I don't know, disaster relief or something. If you need a bunch of temporary shelters for people. Yeah, but yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know. Um, it I looks, think that is pretty sick. It looks like a very, it's like the universal constructor from Deus Ex, except much more rudimentary, but still very, very <laughs> cool because we don't live in a fictional universe. But MIT. That is a wild, I want to see that gif again of it. Whoop. Okay, here we go. So is Caltech going to that make a awesome. slightly better one just to one up MIT? <laughs> I feel like that might happen. <gasps> MIT or Caltech, go. I have to choose one? Yep. Um, no basis for comparison, though nope. I, I used to live in Boston, and I kind of wanted to go to MIT when I was a kid, so MIT, I guess. There you go. East Boom. Coast. Done. There you go. It's a clear and definitive decision. MIT is better than Caltech. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching this from Caltech, I did not say that. Apparently, antivirus so uh, software w from WebRoot uh, nukes a customer's machine. I, I need to dive into this a little bit more. I'm going to post this in the chat. What is that picture? It is an it's ice a spilled cream ice cone. cream cone that's melted a little bit. Cool, good, good. Again, it's the the Ars Technica show, so we keep going with Ars Technica news. What's the scoop? Okay, get it. Understand where oh, the ice cream cone thing gracious. came in okay. on this false positive issue that has crippled a quarter of my customers. Wow, brutal. It's pretty bad. Apparently, Webroot just wrecked some stuff. I haven't used any of their software in a very, very long time. So. Yeah, what do you use? Defender? Um, yeah, just whatever comes with Windows because I'm careful about like my browsing habits. So so many people these days just on Defender. The, the like Defender and then every once in a while download the free trial sweep of Malwarebytes? Yeah. That's yeah. Like, that's like, like sometimes you might need something specialized to get things off if you already have a problem, but like... You know, I just reformat every once in a while. Use Defender and be careful about where you browse. Apparently, you Webroot was flagging Facebook as a phishing site. Nice. That's possibly accurate. Webroot, um, what is a phishing site? Sorry. A, a signature update that it had just nuked hundreds of benign files that were needed to run Microsoft Windows, <laughs> as well as apps that run on top of the operating system, and it flagged Facebook as a phishing site. Where's the de de perfect the delete uh, system thirty two me? Yeah, like yeah, that just, would be appropriate right here. You know what the most secure computer is? One that can't run. Yeah, I was just about to say if no, it doesn't no, function. The most secure computer, an abacus. Which, yeah, and Colton doesn't know what that is. I think. Yeah, I know. Sounds like a dragon. Do you know what an abacus is? No. You're, what? You're, you're the, the GeoGuessr video? I said overclocking an abacus, and Colton was like, what's that? Ah, that's, the only, that's where I heard it. Yeah. It's the little thing that you have beads on. Straw you slide the beads around. Straw pull. To, it's like no, the, no, 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 no. Crap. You said straw poll after I started my explanation. This is not my fault. Do you know, or did, did you know what an abacus? Do I, is I one like B? I know what a JPEG is? Is one B, yes. Disc, disc. Okay, let's see. This is going to be the last thing on the show. I want to see how old I am. That's what this poll is all about. Do modern kids not know what abacai are? Maybe. No. Maybe. Okay. Is it abacai? Well, it sounds like Latin, and a plural yeah. U.S. is I. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I, I could be just completely making that up. But you know what? Let's, let's search it. Let's Google it. Ab oh, thank I goodness. Think. I'm not too old. <laughs> okay. That is a thing that uh, people yep. know. The abacus, plural abacai or abacuses, whichever you'd like. Abacuses. So, I think abacai sounds sexier. Abacai, abacai sounds abacai. better. Have me those abacai, abacai over there. I need to crunch some numbers. That sounds like a really cool name of a protagonist. Abacai? Abacai. It sounds almost biblical, like abacai and the quest for truth. Can someone make that video game? Yeah, let's make that let's make that happen. Or like band name. Like if you're like an experiment oh. like like experimental rock. Oh Abakai. Okay. Yeah? Someone I wanna look up if this is a thing. I spelled it wrong. Wait, wait would that actually be it? It would be it. A Abba Abakai. Yeah, Abakai, you got Abakai it. Abakai NetSuite Consulting. Abakai, Abakai. Search like Abakai band. See if there's yeah. a band called Abakai already. Watch I, it just be a nerd band. I hope they're experimental rock. No. Okay, make a band, call it Abakai. And play experimental rock. Wan show or whatever 10%. You want. That's all we need. Thanks for watching the show this week, guys. Uh, we didn't have a ton 
of crazy news topics. A lot of what was happening in the tech world this week was at NAB with all the cameras and cool software stuff and things that happen at a photo, video, and movie show. So I guess follow Brandon on Twitter. Follow Brandon on Twitter. Uh, wow, I don't know his exact handle. I think it's Brandon, Brandon y. Lee. underscore Y underscore Lee. Yeah, okay. So, so check him out on Twitter. I'm sure he posts the stuff from the show. Also, I believe we've uploaded some videos recently. Well, that's kind of the whole point of this company, so yes. Yeah, I think we've done that. Also, because I forgot to promote my own system, check out Floatplane Club. You can go to the forum. If you go to the forum and look at the buttons on the top of the forum, which I will actually just show you. I don't know why I didn't already do that. Um, you can go to, if you're signed in, uh, there's a Floatplane Club button. And if you have a Floatplane Club, right under here, where it says forum information, Right in this little area, right before computer hardware, there's a section called Floatplane Club. And you can see all of our non-time sensitive videos one week early. And that includes TechWiki. We've got some great stuff for you. Just today, we posted a video on Floatplane featuring this guy in what I, what I think is one of the funniest sketches that we've done um, yeah. on TechWiki basically ever. So that was fun to do. We haven't done a ton of sketches on TechWiki. Yeah. Um, but so it was kind of cool to like intro a video that way and stuff. Yeah. It's a piece on the inherent nihilism of modern life. Yes. But with tech. So Yeah. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. So if you want to check out. that out and tons of other really cool Linus Tech Tip stuff, like if you want to be a little preemptive about it because it's not on there yet and I do not have a date for you at all, uh, if you want to be able to see Scrapyard Wars before everybody else, mm -hmm. you can get on yes. Floatplane Club and see it there. Again, I do not have no. a date. It is not on there yet. Edsel is trying to edit it right now. Yeah, like as we speak, I don't know when it's coming out. So. Yeah, not a clue. I don't know either. I, it's not even, I'm not even just not telling you guys. I have no clue. I don't think our CEO even knows when no. it's coming out. We're all purposefully not asking him. Mm -hmm. I've just been asking him how it's going, not when it's coming out. Because yes. I don't, I don't want to. And know. notice how vague that is. How's yep. it going? How's it going? We we leave. How are you? We we give Ezlon out. Yeah. How are how are you? How are you, the viewer? How are you? Good? How are you, Luke? I, I'm good. We're gonna end the show. Okay. <laughs> Doo -doo. Same time next week, hopefully. Well, we're on time this week, <laughs> and Linus will be back next week. So no. <laughs> so maybe a half an hour later than it started this time. <laughs>